Hi everybody, this is Gad Saad. First of all, Happy New Year, Saturday evening, January 1st. Here I am addressing you. I was hoping that I wouldn't start off the new year with a clip that's uh, negative in its valence, but you're dealt the card that you're dealt with. So here we go. Earlier today, I was excited, woke up, heading off to work at a cafe on my book. Yes, you need to have grit and discipline. The fact that it's January 1st and it's vacation doesn't mean that one shouldn't work. At least in my case, I need to meet a deadline uh, to submit my next book uh, later in spring. And so I woke up, got ready, you know, trained, ready to go. And then I remembered that we are in Quebec under lockdown with a curfew. And if the police stops you when you violate the curfew, then, you know, you get a huge fine and so on. So I, you know, was feeling frustrated. So I uh, put out a whole bunch of my thoughts on social media. I won't read all of them, but I'll read a few and then I'll comment about something that I just found out earlier this evening. So I'll begin with the following. Let us suppose that we were to be in the current steady state, whatever that means for the foreseeable future. How much longer would people be willing to have these governmental COVID mandates imposed upon them? It has now been two years, another two years, another 20 years, another 200 years, asking people about the boundary conditions that might activate them away from their passive compliance is a valuable exercise to undertake. Again, no one is contesting the importance of being a responsible individual when it comes to personal behavior. My genuine concern is that for a great majority of the population, no amount of gar governmental intrusion will ever cause them to pause and question these realities. Therein lies the tragedy. Humans are largely quiet sheep with a few irreverent and bold non-followers. And then later I posted the following. Earlier today, I was having a chat with my wife. I reminded her of the astounding hell that we faced in the Lebanese Civil War and the gargantuan miracle that we escaped with our lives. We faced death at every corner, but we survived. Of course, others did not. Life is full of unpredictable turns and twists. It is impossible to live a full life whilst seeking to mitigate all risks, and yet our response to COVID is precisely that. If the current COVID policies are well calibrated, what would the policies be for a pathogen with a much higher case fatality rate? Life is about trade-offs. Life is about pros and cons. Life is about well-modulated responses to specific threats. Are the current haphazard mandates that vary from country to country, state to state, county to county, and city to city the best we could do with the totality of our collective wisdom? I reiterate that future historians will marvel at human irrationality, human callousness, and human apathy. I'm hardly trivializing the seriousness of the pandemic, but I certainly think that we should be discussing the end game. Well, these uh, comments that I posted earlier this morning were quite prophetic because just uh, you know earlier this evening, I found out that Quebec, the Quebec government, so that, so we have here a per, uh, everything is on lockdown you can't go to a cafe you can't go to a restaurant you can't go, you can't do anything uh this is 2 years into the pandemic with the current epidemiological realities but uh, and then there's a curfew that starts at 10 o'clock at night till 5 in the morning you can't go out you can't do anything you can't leave your house uh now we've had these previous lockdowns uh, you know i think it was last year uh, but there was one exception then, uh, which was that if you had to walk your dog, you know, during the curfew, you could walk your dog. But as long as you didn't, uh, you know, if you, uh, walk further than a kilometer away. So now imagine, imagine how insane it is that there is actually such uh, an edict coming from the government. But why one kilometer? Why not half a kilometer? Why not two kilometers? Okay. Well, now it turns out that that exemption of you can violate the curfew in a free society by leaving your house uh, to walk your dog has been revoked. 
you are no longer allowed to walk your dog after 10 p.m. and until 5 in the morning. So I live in a residential area. You can walk around and there could be literally no one that you can ever cross. If I, I know I've always had Belgian Shepherds, but they've both since passed. Uh, we currently don't have any dogs. But if we did, now in our case, we have a very large backyard, so that's fine. But if you uh, live in an apartment, if you don't live in a place where you can just open the door for your dog to go out to do their business, you can't go out. Your dog has to go out to the bathroom. Sorry, it's illegal. You know, it's difficult to comment about this. It's difficult to to perceive any conceivable explanation that can justify this reality. And actually, uh, two days ago, or I can't remember if it was yesterday or the day before, I was walking with a very good friend of mine, and I asked him the following question. I said, if we were to, if I were to ask you to allocate 100 points to the following two factors in terms of how, you know, how much they explain. Uh, so factor A, the COVID mandates uh, that we are seeing are due largely to governmental ineptitude. They don't know what they're doing, so they just come up with all kinds of hap haphazard uh, you know, mandates. Factor two or causal explanation two is kind of the quote conspiratorial devos, uh, the great reset. So, you know, the governments are well aware of what they're doing and there is, you know, an attempt to, uh, to control the population. Uh, so how much would you give to each? I mean, would you say 75 points are given to inept governmental ineptitude and 25 points are given to, um, you know, sinister reasons. And then I, I thought about it. I said, well, factor two, meaning that there is some sort of sinister, you know, causal explanation, doesn't have to just be stemming from, you know, the, the Devos Great Reset. It could well be that we are reverting to the natural instinct of authoritarianism, where there is a ruling class and the rest of the great unwashed that accept their fate. Human history, that is the default value. So now you have an opportunity under COVID to uh, take the anomalous reality that we've had in the West. I say anomalous because the freedoms that we've had over the past few centuries is not the default value of how societies have organized themselves throughout human history. It's been an outlier. It's been an anomaly. And so now we have an opportunity, if, I'm, if you're speaking as the government, if you're speaking as anyone who has the possibility to rule over you, to return to that penchant. So now I start being intoxicated in my power. I tell you when to shower. I tell you when to go out. I tell you which sexual position you engage in tonight because it can either increase or reduce the likelihood of you transmitting COVID to one another between you and your partner. I tell you when you can walk your dog. I tell you when you can't walk your dog. No reasonable person, no sensible person, no honest person, no decent person believes that there is any epidemiological or scientific explanation that can justify why the government, never mind about the curfews and lockdown, why they are weighing in on whether you can walk your dog outside or not. Fascism and authoritarianism and dictatorial rule doesn't happen, you know, uh, by magic. It happens by a concerted, orchestrated dance between a bunch of people who are really keen on seizing power and the rest of the people who are more than willing to sit quietly and apathetically. By the way, I get some Cretans who write to me, so what are you doing about it? As if someone like me who spends you know all their time weighing in on endless topics at great personal and professional risk is not enough i'm not doing enough it's saturday night january 1st i'm doing this clip well what are you doing gadsad what do you want me to do uh go and burn down city hall right so the way you do i can do it by using my voice and platform to speak on these issues you can do it by 
some other action. But the reality is that this will never end until people say it can't go on. Remember, the income tax in Canada was a temporary measure that was passed in 1917. It was just going to be temporary personal income tax. 105 years later, that temporary measure is still in place. It's human nature. We understand it. We have the data. It's very clear. There's nothing conspiratorial about this. When the government is telling you that you can't walk your dog, when you have a curfew, I grew up in the Lebanese Civil War. You didn't have dog curfews. Everybody was butchering one another. You couldn't walk outside your house. The snipers were going to blow your head. But the government didn't say, you can't walk your dog from 9 to 11, and it can't be more than two blocks away from your home. That's in Lebanon, the, the standard by which all butchering is measured against. But in Quebec, in the 21st century, I can't leave my house now. Happy New Year, everybody. Cheers.